have two doctorates. One is in pastoral medicine and science, so that allows me to be licensed in the entire United States and its territories in about 20 different countries. I am also a doctor of chiropractic, and I've been a doctor for over 20 years now. And today I'm going to go ahead and talk about functional wellness and what is, what is functional wellness and how we can attain that. But first I need to talk about what wellness is, right? And you guys, some of this will be a review and some of it will be brand new to you. So let me step on over here to kind of do some of these slides with us. But let me first start um, about, uh, I got sick. I used to work in a oil refinery and I was a process plant operator in an industrial firefighter. So Chevron sent me off to Reno to do industrial firefighting. While I was working with them, I got covered in chemicals. And at the age of 30, I ended up being bedridden. And the medical doctors told me, you know, we can give you all of this medicine, you know, but you'll be dead by the time you're 40. Now, I know you guys won't believe this. I do have an ID, but I'm actually going to turn 59 this year, okay? So what happened is being bedridden, I try to figure out what in the world is going on with me and my body and how can I get myself well because, you know, my doctors, I had some phenomenal top-notch doctors and they were just giving me more medication and more medication and it just seemed like I wasn't getting well. So my mother, I grew up in the Berkeley area, just eight miles north of Berkeley, and my mother my whole life when I was growing up had given me vitamins every day. We all had a little box on our table and man, she shoved them down us morning, noon, and night. And you know, we weren't sick as kids. But when I became an adult, got on my own life, you kind of, you know, I'm not gonna pay for that. I can eat okay, I'm busy. I don't, you know, need to take care of my body in that manner. And what happened is I did get sick because my cells in my body were worn down. Being exposed to all those chemicals, I got pretty sick. So I started reading books and I started going back to taking supplements and, and eat, trying to eat good, but it wasn't working so well. And so I finally, you know, one book after another, one class after another, went back to college, started just grabbing a hold of things. Because you know, when you're sick and you're laying in bed and you can't get up and participate in life, it's no fun. I lost my income. I lost my job while I went out on long-term disability. I lost my girlfriend and I almost had to move home because trying to get myself well, you know, was costing a lot of money. And so what happened is I started to slowly and slowly get better. And some friends of mine who were doctors at uh, UCSF School of Medicine said, you know, Sandy, you've got your associates behind, you've got almost all your prereqs for med medical school. We're going to offer in two and a half years a class and open a class and have specific slots for older returning students to come go to med school. And I'm thinking, holy moly, I'm only in my 30s and you're calling me old, right? So they said the next two years, we want you to, we don't want you to just sit. We want you to continue your education. You need to go find a duly accredited osteopathic school or a chiropractic school. Because the first 85% of the first couple of years there 100% transferable. And so I picked a school, I left the Berkeley, the San Francisco East Bay, and I went to Georgia, of all places. And I got there, and even though I was just holding on tight, trying to take a class and take a class, I still wasn't really well. And I got sick while I was there, and I got really sick. And in the middle of the night, a friend of mine, I only knew one, one person knew where I lived, and they came over and checked on me. And I lost, I was on the bathroom floor, and I lost 21 pounds in three days. So they took me to the hospital, the hospital. What was wrong with I started purging. My body, uh, every orifice, things were coming out. And I went home, I just didn't feel well. I went into the bathroom, and next minute I know they found me in the bathroom three days later. And what happened is while it, when you're at chiropractic school or osteopathic school, they touch you a lot, and they move your bones, and they feel you, and, they, and the moment someone's touching you, your body and your body chemistry and the vibrations of those cells change, okay? So what happens is I didn't realize, when you're, when you're new in school, you know, even though you're a student, they don't let student doctors loose on the public, okay? That's not a good idea. 
So what they do is when you're going to medical school, they set the student doctors, the older student doctors, on the younger student doctors. So all these doctors are working on us. We're their guinea pigs, okay? And when they start moving bones and start doing stuff in your body, it changes your nervous system. It changes your immune system. And it changes your cognitive, your emotions, and psychological systems. And what happened is nobody there knew, and I wasn't honest. You remember those old big brown Safeway bags? Back in the 80s and 90s, they had the good size ones. Every day, I had that many pharmaceuticals that I took. So I took medications, pharmaceuticals, antivirals, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, painkillers. They started giving me antidepressants to try to get me up to get my body back together because I had such chemical exposures. And so I was functioning on that, and nobody told me that the moment they start touching your body, all of those chemicals that are inside of your body, which are toxic, are going to start moving around. And so my body started getting better, and it purged. So um, they found me on the bathroom floor. A doctor came. They went to the doctor. They took me to the emergency. They gave me a shot, said, here, take these pills and go home. Well, I was drive heaving. I mean, you couldn't stop the vomit. It just wouldn't happen. So what happened is I told a friend of mine, and I says, I'm home. I don't know what's going on. I'm still dry heaving. It's five days later. And in the middle of the night, a doctor came to my house at 2 o'clock in the morning, set up this table. They got me out of my bed. I swear it was 100 feet. It was only 35 feet to the table. I thought I was dying. Put me on a table. Did weird stuff with my legs. Now, I'm a you know, first trimester in medical school here. And he comes over, and he touches my back, and he moves one bone in my back. And he says, that's it. And I can't tell you to this day what bone he moved. And he sent me, sent me back to bed, and he, on my way back to bed, he says, I'll see you in the morning in my office, and you're returning to school tomorrow. And I thought he was crazy. I woke up in the morning, no more throwing up. I got a shower. I went to, to school, and I thought, wow, there's something about this. Now, granted, I was only going to this school for two years and then transferring across to UCSF School of Medicine. And so what happened is... Um, I decided that I should learn more and more about this. And so I stayed at the school, and I ended up graduating as, as a doctor. And I, and I specialized, actually at the time, in pediatrics and sports medicine and nutrition. And that was my specialty that I did. Because at the time, I felt so good. I got married, and I had a child. Even though they told me I'd be dead by the time I was 40, my health got better and better and better. Because I started taking the principles that my mom and grandma said, everything in moderation, take your vitamins and eat good, clean, healthy food. That's what our folks said to us, right? And your mom and dad talked to you about that or not? So I did that and I started getting better, OK? And so when I started looking at things, I'm like, OK, let's look at the foundation of what health is. Now, the medical paradigm, we're going to switch, because I have some of this on slides here. Let's see. This is from the, the World Health Organization. They're the ones who define what health is. And it's interesting. It says health is optimum physical, mental, and social well-being. Health is not the, merely the absence of disease or infirmity. I'm like, it's amazing. A lot of people, I stand up, I look pretty healthy here, yeah? Some of those chemicals that I got covered in, they have half-lives of 50 to 100 years. So even though I look pretty good, and right now I feel pretty good, my cells, some of those things are still stuck in my cells. And they'll be there till well past I die. But as long as I work on the other pillars of health, some of that will get, get healed and worked on. So when is it time to start taking charge of your health? Is it when we're feeling great? Is it when we have some dis-ease, our body just doesn't feel right? Is it when we're in pain? I see a lot of patients, they finally come then. Or is it when you get rolled into the, like the young lady this morning? She's uh, going on a gurney, the fire department, she had a fall. When is the optimum time? Well, when does the MDs come in? They usually come in at pain or when you're in here. A lot of people don't go see their doctor you know, when they're still in disease. Uh, maybe it'll go away. 
I just worked too hard, or I didn't get enough sleep, or I ate something wrong. Okay? It's really important. If we were to go to the doctor when we're feeling great, then we can go ahead and we can get a really great baseline. You know, we can say, this is what health is, and at that point we can educate what health truly is and the pillars of health. When we go when we're in disease, that's still, that's a phenomenal time to go because we can say, we can educate and we can say, here's what you need to do to improve that health. Even when we get to pain, that's a phenomenal time to go too. When we start getting here, then we're finding that, you know, we can educate, we can change some lifestyle. We might not be able to reverse everything, but at least we can reverse some of it so that you can have more of a healthy life. This is a health continuum. So when we're born normally, we got total health. And then we have some disease, right? And this kind of got jumbled around in the transactions. So I'm going to take my notes out, and then I'll just talk about it. So what happens is we normally have total health here. And then we get some stress. Everybody has stress. I don't care how old or how young you are. There's chemical, there's physical, and there's emotional stress, okay? When we experience that, our bodies get a little distorted. Our muscles tighten up, we get a little headaches, our stomach tightens up, yeah? The next step is because of that tightness in things, and the energy's not flowing, and our body's not working right, then we start to have abnormal function. You know, we get irregular heartbeats, or lung issues, or headaches, or irritable bowels, or, you know, kidneys and urinary stuff going on. After that, it goes into dis-ease. I mean, we really don't know. We just feel there's abnormal. We don't really know what's going on on abnormal until we start feeling a little dis-ease. After disease, there are symptoms. This is when most people get to their medical doctors, or their osteopaths, or even their chiropractors or their natural paths when they're having symptoms. That's a little late in the stage, okay? And then after that, if we don't deal with it in a proper way, then of course there's gonna be early death uh, from those diseases. Now medical doctors, they see to intervene, I'm gonna read this because part of that is block. They, they seek to intervene after a diagnosis is made. Is that an opportune time to get that? Not really. Not really. At that point, we've already got, we're clear down here at symptoms. So this restricts their input to after symptoms develop. As a result, their effort can only be seen to postpone death and disease, by disease, and, to, and not to be able to promote health. What we want is when we talk about, you know, whole body wellness, we want to promote a healthy lifestyle. So where do naturopaths or chiropractors or osteopaths come into play? Usually, they come in in the total health, okay? Functional wellness doctors and chiropractors, and I, and I use chiropractors, and it could be the osteopath or the naturopath, okay? Because they're, they're on the same philosophy and foundation as a, as a chiropractor, okay? So what we do is we want to go ahead and we want to remove the cause, and the symptoms will, 99% of the time, will fade. The, the, the extent of how much it fades and goes away is the extent of how long it was there, okay? So doctors of chiropractic and functional wellness believe that instead of treating disease with chemicals and invasive procedures, we begin by eliminating nerve interference. Because our body all functions on our mainframe, right? If we didn't have our brains, which is the nervous system, we wouldn't be able to function properly. Our brain talks to, comes down, the nerve system comes down through our spine. It also comes out in a peripheral, so it's touching all of our, our nerves and stuff. And so we have, and then we have another nervous system, the central nervous system and facial nerves, okay? And this is all from brain function. So if there's a miscommunication in between our brain to any system, organ, tissue, or gland, because there's a blockage, and a lot of times the blockage is in the spine, sometimes it, it, there's other issues where the blockage becomes, then our body, our brain, cannot can talk to the, that kidney until the kidney had a function. Okay, you guys are the perfect age for this. This will be an excellent way. I used to teach this to kids, but they didn't get it. 
Remember in the old days when we had TVs and then we didn't have the cable and the wires? We had the rabbit ears. Everybody remember the rabbit ears? Yeah? Okay. So this is the brain. The brain is the television station sending those wavelengths through the air, right? And we're going to pick it up. We're a spy over in a different country. And we're, we got to find out what they're telling us to do, our mission, right? And they tell us, we're going to turn that TV on. And like we turn it on and it's garbled. So we don't get, we don't understand what that, that mission is, that, that the brain is telling whatever part of the body how to act. We don't get that communication. And we can't communicate back properly with it, right? But if we take those rabbit ears and kind of tweak them a little bit, and maybe even put a little extra foil on them to get a little more and tweak it around, right? Then we can get a clear signal. So what we do as functional wellness doctors and as chiropractors is we may align the spine. We may just eliminate something that you're eating or doing to your body that's blocking that nerve interference. Right? And we want to get rid of that nerve interference, open it up so that we got a clear message from here to every system and, and gland in the body, okay? So what we try to do is like eliminate the nerve system and the interference and allow the body a chance to heal itself before we result to drugs or surgery, okay? So those are some of the foundations of what we do. The medical model has always had a pillar of health and it's pretty good. It's a good, good foundation, proper nutrition, proper exercise, proper rest and relaxation, and proper mental well-being. So let me ask you, the last time you went to your medical doctor, did he have enough time to educate you on what proper nutrition is? How about you? When you went, did he talk to you about what, how many hours of rest and what kind of relaxation you need? We're missing that. They used to. Old time doctors would spend time and talk to you and educate you about what you need. Now this is pretty good. That's pretty much a good foundation. Now chiropractic has been around 125 years. Their foundation is a proper functioning nervous system. Because we know the body works off the nerves, off the brain, off the nerve flow. Good nutrition, so we're following the medical doctors. Good exercise, rest and relaxation, and proper mental well-being. But chiropractic looks at, you need a spiritual well-being. You need to be connected to something that's greater than you. And so this is what chiropractic looks at. And these are the foundations. This has been the foundation for health, the pillars of health for them for over 125 years. This has been the pillar of health for them for 110 years. Those are the, those are the dates that these were actually written. These are followed to, and these are taught every single day in, in chiropractic universities around the world. This is not taught anymore. And it's a shame because that's what we need in today's healthcare system. So today, in order to have a healthy life, because you know as well as I do, I'm 50, gonna be 59 this year. When you guys were 59, Life was different. When we were 25, life was different. When you were kids, life was different. We have many different things now. Our bodies have evolved. Our minds have evolved. Our emotions have evolved. This world and the stress has evolved. So in order for us to have a truly healthy body, we need to look at the body and the soul and the spirit. They're combined, and we know that now through a lot of science and advanced science that we find, okay? So we look at, for true whole body wellness, we have to have an optimum nervous system. And I've already talked about the nerve; it's the main frame, right? We have to have good, clean nutrition. That means when we were kids, we ate food. Today, we ate food. We yeah. ate Good food, right out of the garden. That tomato, 20, even 20 years ago, had more nutritional value than our tomatoes do today. Same with straight across the board. Spinach, lettuce, asparagus, all of our vegetables that we are eating today. There have been research and labs and done on it. 
the nutritional value of those have decreased significantly because our soils have decreased significantly. What have we, we gained in, in this food that they call food at the grocery store now is that we decided that we want to have these super crops and so we've done genetic modification or we've used a lot of pesticides to kill all the stuff and then we do these GMO seeds and so what we're eating today is Franken food. I mean, it's just not whole. The gen genetically modified food that, that they offer today, and I really encourage you when you do go shopping and you do go looking for your fruits and vegetables, stay away from the GMO. The GMO we know now will actually change the DNA in our body and that we cannot truly digest that and utilize the nutrients in it. So the next thing we have is quality sleep time. Okay? What, ha what we're finding is a lot of people have a lot of computers and laptops and things like that, and they're putting them in their bedrooms, their cell phones, near their bed. Okay? A, lot, a lot of people are. We're finding out that that electrical interference is not allowing people to drop down and sleep properly. And so we, you know, we encourage them, move all the electronics away from your bed, put them across the room if you have to keep them in the room, otherwise put them in another room. Because today, with all this electrical, the EMF going on us, that actually irritates our brain. Well, you'll have to find out how much wave that is. But you know, at this point, for you, because of falls and stuff, it is kind of important for you to hold on to that. But if you're in bed sleeping, you don't have to have it on your body. You want to have it close, but not on your body. So also we want to talk about good sleep is the quality of sleep. Is your room dark enough? Is it, you know, we live here, sometimes it gets really wicked hot, right? This summer it's been bad, but you guys have air conditioning in your room? A cooler sleeping environment allows the body to sleep better. Good amount of hours of sleeping, not too many, like my dad has, he's 83, and he has dementia and Parkinson's in one arm, and he's getting pretty advanced in, in his diagnosis. And so he wants to sleep. He'll like to sleep the whole day away. My mother's like, oh, no, you're going to get up out of bed. You have to get up out of bed. You ladies were already at an exercise class today and up and moving, and you guys got up and drove on in here, so you have to get up out of bed. But you need to set a nighttime sleep. I got my mom and dad. I says, okay, you know, get your bath time at this time. Go in and go to bed for them, 9.30. 9.30 is their thing. They're asleep by 10. She gets up at, at 6 in the morning. My dad, she gets, makes my dad get up at 8 because she likes that quiet time to do her devotions and have her coffee, which is important to have that quiet time. But they get good sleep, okay? And we tweaked around their bedroom and the lights and stuff so that they, they can get it. Yeah, yeah, my mom is up um, twice at night to go to the bathroom. Yep. So, you know, we've, we've talked about that, and, you know, I gave her some different supplements and things that she's trying. There is a new, she's actually going to the doctors, and there is a new acupuncture thing where they do a little acupuncture down here, and she says she goes in for 8 or 12 times, I think. She was either 8 times, she thinks she has to go to a total of 12, but she says that has decreased. So, you know, it's very important. If there's non-invasive stuff that you can do to help with that, that's very, very important to do. Okay? So sleep quality is extremely important. And then sense exercise. Okay? My nephew tried to get my dad to go out and go on a 40-minute walk every single day one week. And I'm like, he can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not sensible for him. You gals, I heard you talking, you went to a 9 a.m. exercise class, yeah? That's sensible for you. Do you go exercise at least? We should be exercising at least five times a week. If it's walk or in the pool or little stretching exercises, very, very important to do that. But everybody's body is different. So when I see them as a client, I say, let's see what's going on with you. You know, some, I have some couples where the wife, She's got some extra weight on her. I'm like, okay, you know what? We're going to get you at the pool, and you're just going to walk back and forth at the pool. For the husband, who's in pretty good shape, you know what? You can do the pool also, or you can go for a walk, and you need to walk this much. 
Everybody's body is different, but you have to have, you cannot just sit. Motion is key for longevity. Good posture is key for longevity. And so when you're exercising, hopefully whoever's working with you works on you and talks to you about good posture while you're doing it. Boundaries, personal boundaries in your life. Let me tell you that there, and there's a book now I understand, there are energy vampires. You know, you guys have gotten to this point in your life. I was talking with my mother last week. She says, you know, I've gotten to this point in my life and I just don't want any drama. You know, dad and I need to have things calm at our house. One of the grandkids was coming over. And I says, okay, mom, we have, you have to build those boundaries. And so we sent some, some little boundaries. And I said, you know, just try this, try that. And I says, Mom, I'm talking to the choir. I says, you used to be, have a private practice as a psychologist. You used to talk about boundaries. She says, you know what? I completely forgot. So if there's drama going in, even with our own kids, I've got a 21-year-old, and there's drama with that. And it's like, you know, you're an adult. You're living on your own. Here are the boundaries. This is, you know, and you have to say that because you need to be able to go home and be with your spouse or be by yourself or with your friends without drama. You need to be able to say, no, I'm tired. I don't want to go out and do this. You have to look at your health first, and, and that's in with boundaries. And it can be as simple as, you know what? I don't want you to come over to my, my apartment right now and have coffee. You come over six days a week, seven days a week. I need a break. That's why my mother gets up. Her boundary is 6 to 6.30. She gets her coffee. She does her devotions. She reads her newspaper. That's her boundaries, and everybody now knows you don't cross those. You, if you're going to get up and vi while you're visiting, you be quiet and leave her alone. You have to have a routine. You have to be able to have um, no drama. You have to have a peace. Your home and your environment should be peaceful because when it's not, you get stressed out it changes the biochemical reaction in your brain, clear out through your muscles and your digestive tract, okay? So boundaries are important. Family bonds. Now, I do and have done lots of talks in senior homes, and a lot of folks that I know, even personally, have, and a lot of my patients, have no family left. My mother has my father. But my mother said to me last year, she says, nobody knows who I am because everybody's passed away, all of her family. And uh, even my twin sister has passed away. And my dad sometimes doesn't know, right? And I said, Mom, I know who you are. So you have to have family bounds. And if you don't have a family or ohana, you need to develop a hanai family. Friendship, you guys are friends, right? And so you hang out and talk with each other, but you have that social support. You can call each other. You guys, you know, you have each other. I don't know if you have family, but you have to develop. If there's a lack of family in Ohana, whether it's Hanai or not, you need to develop that. Because what happens when you don't have that is you don't feel, and here we're getting into the body, the soul, and the spirit, you don't feel inside yourself that you're connected. And when you start to get that I'm not connected, there's no value. We get into anxiety and into depression. And that's when we need our social support and have friends who are honest enough to say, you know what? You've been hibernating long enough. Shake it off. Let's go out. Let's talk. I'll bring up. You know, let's have a cup of tea. You have to have those bounds because it changes the biochemistry in the brain. There's a phenomenal, phenomenal amount of research in that. Love and acceptance. Love and acceptance. How much time? How am I doing on time? Okay, good. Last night I went to a, a concert, okay? And um, Terry Mac Allman was given a free concert. He's a Christian singer. He's a worship leader. Now, I don't know if you guys are Christians or not, but he sang a song last night to Jesus off the book of Song of Solomon. And it says, you know, I found the, the person, my soul found the person that I love. And he was talking about his relationship with his God and his higher power. You know, I sat there and listened to that song. And I realized that I had tears 
streaming down my face. Because we all have to have somebody that we love. There's got to be somewhere that we feel loved and we feel